Hi guys and welcome to Forge Ride. Glad you could drop in. This will be the latest in the series of making the tools required to make a hammer. While this may not seem like an essential tool to make hammers with, it, uh, you've got to take into consideration that this series is based around a single person making a hammer at the anvil with no power tool, so no power hammer, no treadle hammer, no press and no striker. So one of the considerations you'll have to have is when you've got your hammer billet and you're trying to put the fullers into both sides of the eye, you will need some way of holding the bottom and top fullers in order to be able to have the billet in the tongs in one hand and strike it with the other hand you can't hold your fuller you may be able to put something in your hardy hole but that's only one side of the fuller it's not the other side of the fuller so in this video i'll be constructing a guillotine tool which will go into the hardy hole and come out across the anvil and we'll have top bottom dies in order to be able to make those fullers. Obviously you can use it for many other things as well and it um, can be used on multiple projects and is a vital tool in my opinion for any blacksmith. Okay well I'll be making this tool out of some 15 mil plate and it will be a c-section style guillotine tool it will have a bend in the guillotine tool and I'll show some brief clips of a drawing that I've made just a hand drawing that I've made to show exactly how I intend to put it together it'll have a plate it'll have a c-section and it will have a bottom and top die that's the basics of it it will have the ability to take 15 sorry 16 millimeter thick dies which is the same plate that I'm making the guillotine tool out of but it'll also have an adaption on other tools that I've seen on the internet that I haven't seen this adaption before and it will not only be able to take the 15 millimeter dies as a single die coming together but also you'll be able to put up to a 40 millimeter die potentially even up to about 43 millimeter thick die into this tool without having to undo bolts and take the plate off and put larger spaces in which I've seen on other videos or just have one single set and have to have a whole new guillotine tool with a wider die set this I think gets around those issues quite well you can be the judge of that and we'll see if it works so let's get into the build and I'll see you during the process okay well here I am again making an apology for not capturing everything on video uh, forgot to put the camera on and uh, I know I say that a lot but it's the way it is I get focused on what I'm doing and sometimes I forget to flick the on switch so I've marked out my steel and I've started cutting it I've cut a strip off the bottom which will become some dies I've marked out the c-shaped section inside the center of my overall jig and I've laid out a square on the ground sorry on the plate and uh, I've been marking scoring up a line with the grinder and it's just a lot of grinding work uh, cutting with the cutting wheel on the grinder to do for this fabrication job and you probably won't want to see much of it I'll put in a few clips of what I'm doing but mainly I'll show a bit of a drawing of what I am making and a few clips along the way of how it's progressing okay not sure how good this view is how much of the drawing you can see but it just shows the overall C shape of my 
uh, blacksmith helper, smithing magician, many other names that have been given to these tools. And uh, I'm constructing one that is a C-shape so you can bring the material in from the side and it effectively has a 60 millimeter lower section. This is 60, mm, 60 millimeters in that dimension. It is all made out of 16 millimeter thick plate. So it's going to be very strong. It comes up this way. Uh, those dimensions is about 380 mil. So it gives me plenty of room to uh, get long, large stock in. This is just a shank that will go into my hardy hole and 25 millimeter or inch thick square bar that will be welded to the bottom. That's just a plate that sits on top of the anvil, uh, which will be you know, something around about that wide. Might even be a nice thick plate that will be the width of my anvil to give it a good, strong, sturdy platform. Then this section here is 100 mil wide for strength in the C section area. So there's no flex in it there. And then this section coming along the top, which is where the top die will drop down from is also 90 millimeters thick and so the bottom die will sit in here like so and the top die will come down from here like so and be struck from the top i'm also thinking about putting some sort of a tool steel or a uh, an, even a non-tool steel welded material to the top of that that I can hit strike on there and when that wears out I can just cut it off and weld another one on it uh, is disposable so to speak The trick will be getting them both the same. I bent one, bent the other, and then decided that wasn't enough. So I'm in the process of uh, trying to extend the bends on both sides. It's a bit hit and miss really. Unhook that, bring this around here, and I think you'll be able to see that that is incredibly close to spot on my little red line. Right, I'm just going to point out the process that I'm going through here. This is effectively my system. So this is one that hasn't been welded together yet so I thought I'd show it as um, it is bit by bit so that's my bottom spacer 
That is the six, same 16mm plate. Then I have one that's cut 15mm narrower than that to put in as a spacer there. It obviously needs to... I'll set them up later. That goes in as a spacer like so. And then this is another one that's cut the same as the bottom one, which overlaps like so. And sits there. So I have made three of these already and this is the one I'm about to weld up now. So if I hold that there and pull that out, this is effectively what they look like. Three pieces welded together which creates a channel. That is then welded to there. These two, none of these are welded in place by the way, so they all can move. But the idea is you make them all up and then weld them in place with a die in. This isn't the die. I've got separate material for dies, but this is the same width. So it's able to give me a good idea of how I'm lining it up. to show that that piece is made and I've now cut my first two dies so they're just cut out of the steel and not uh, the dies aren't put in in the shape that I want that's just a straight fuller this then slips in there and drops down to the appropriate place down there. I've got it just a bit thicker at the top there so that it doesn't go all the way in at the moment. I can see what I do is I just get in here with the uh, worn out flap disc and just take a little bit off the edges of here where I feel that it needs to be taken down so it slides easily. Unfortunately this scrap piece of steel is not 100% dead straight. It's got a slight bow in it probably only a millimetre or half a millimetre so I've had to take a little bit out of the edges of here a couple of them are like that, a couple of them aren't so I'll work on that as I go so yep, she just dropped in so that's my top die and I've just marked up this here so now I'm going to cut that in half which will allow me to slip this into the bottom section which will make one, two top dies I'll have, I've got four of those I can make and I've got four of these to make. Unfortunately I only have the angle grinder to cut my dies with so you've got to be very careful to make sure you're cutting the line straight. Very difficult to cut a, I shouldn't say straight, it's easy enough to cut a straight line. Difficult to cut a vertical line with these things. go. Pretty stable. <laughs> wonder if this lines up. Oh, just off. Look at that, they're not above each other. Got a bit of an alignment issue there. What I might have to do is try and twist this Heat it up here, give it a slight twist that way, well here, just give it a slight twist so that they join properly. Now that's the issue there that I have, I've got one die coming down and not lining up with the other die. And that's because I had to physically bend 
these and uh, I believe that the bottom of this bend here is kicked out of course that's an exaggeration it's probably only a millimeter up here or less to get that there geez that's only a millimeter as it is it's almost right at the other side here as I mentioned earlier on I believe a couple of these dies are not perfectly 100 laser measurement straight they've got a very very slight bow in it like, and you probably can't even see it down that line but it is there probably doesn't show up on the camera so if I drop this in that way it goes down and as I say the alignment is out but you might have noticed now that I've got that top written on there in a specific orientation if I turn that die around and I drop it down they line up 100% flush with each other so I will be putting my striker plate on the top here and it will be orientated it will have a some sort of marking device on the top piece that instructs me which way to drop it in so that those two meet up perfectly like that so they took those two marry with each other very well like that and very well like that so as long as I drop the bottom die and the top die in a specific orientation I will have no problems okay I've measured 60 mil well, a bit under actually 58 mil from there to there uh, it's 100 mil wide so I'm going to cut it down the 60 halfway along down the 50 that will give me two 60 by 50 mil pieces to make my large fullering dies that'll go on to the end of my 16 mil main die okay you don't need to see me grinding it but uh, that's what i'm going to do this is an update on my large hammer fuller it's not welded together i've made the dies so i'm showing it just placed together so top die comes down to a forklift tine die that will be welded along here out the back underneath and underneath and then the same here we have the die sorry the sleeve the small die sleeve that goes in there which is its actual guide and then another forklift tine die that will be welded the same as that one to that one so they will meet together like so I think that's pretty close um, they could always be worked on they're touching just in one spot there so I want to get them looks like it's the top one needs to be evened out so that they touch all the way along not just in one corner but I want to get them welded up in position before I go doing that so okay so top die out this is a bit of a look at it so it's a piece of forklift tine which is made into a fuller shape it's not perfect and like I say it will be honed over time to get it right there's the top die itself she's a bit burred over there where I was bashing on it earlier on um, that's the very top so that goes down there and because it's got a really large 40 mil die welded to the bottom of there it sticks up a long way 
and it's going to have a striking piece welded to the top of that so once that drops down in there it's flush but it will be effectively that high above the top and then it'll have a striking piece that is wider than this that I can get my hands on and pull. So that is just the other die. That is the forklift tine and that is the small die. So one thing I'm considering doing is getting another piece of this plate that is wider and the same length and actually putting a cap on top of here like so welding a piece that's you know not quite the full width obviously but close to it to the top of that and then welding that on top of that again and that way the pressure won't actually be on the die so it won't want to try and burr over at the bottom over time and get stuck in there the pressure will be over the top of this spread out over the top of that and all the way around here so I think if it has a cap over the top of this bottom die and then that welded to that that might I know it'll lift it up a bit but I've got plenty of room I've made the thing plenty big enough to have plenty of room to get another piece in between and I think that might um, assist the overall longevity of this bottom die. What I'll do is I'll get them in place as much as I can, put a piece of something on either side of them, clamp it up so I know they're in the right place and tack weld them in place before welding them to the bottom. My plan here is I've got my plate cut. It's got a bit of a rock in it so I'm going to have to deal with that at some stage. You can see I've drawn a little square there. I hope you can see it with the light. That is where I'm going to cut out so that this drops down in there. This 25 by 20 inch stock will be attached to the base of there. Base plate will slide in around the inch stock once I've cut that piece out of there. I'm going to have to leave this video here and call it part one. I'm disappointed I didn't get to finish off all of the work I need to do on this. I've got very close. I have made the actual jig. I've cut out a lot of my dies. I haven't welded the large fullering dies to the sliding sleeve dies, which is what I need to do to be able to put the large hammer fullers in. I've cut out my plate for the base, haven't welded that on. I've also made the hardy shank to weld onto the back over here, but I haven't um, welded that on. The reason that I won't be able to finish this video today and get it up fully finished is because I have injured myself and I won't be able to do any work in the workshop for at least a week so I thought I may as well just call it part one and put part two up when I'm able to get back in and do some welding and grinding and things like that. I won't go into the gory details but I'm not allowed to use my left hand with anything physical so that rules out doing this sort of work and uh, therefore I will leave it here disappointed but very happy with the progress today so thank you for tuning into Forge Right today and watching this video I'm sorry I didn't get all the way through the project but uh, that'll just give me an opportunity to put up part two if you haven't already subscribed please do so give this video the thumbs up if you did enjoy it and maybe share it with your friends okay 
I'll see you when I've recovered from my injury. And uh, thanks again for watching.